Greetings, Angry Joe. You've trained hard over this past decade. Now, it's time. Show me what you've learned. Force Pudda! <laughs> good. Very good. I felt that one. Few have been so loud. You have never been more ready. Your training is complete. Now, feel it within you, and let your shout bring down your enemies. Thank you, Master. It is only through your teachings that I am now powerful enough to rid the Earth of his evil. I will be the champion of Skyrim. Wish me luck. Oh, goody, my income checks are here. Let's see, uh, Activision? <laughs> uh, oh, all the revenue from online classes. Oh, that's a big one. And the uh, OES oh, yes, cap carpet. What, what the hell? Your day has finally come, Corporate Commander. Angry Joe? With fantastic games such as Skyrim, the world no longer needs a villain such as yourself. What the hell are you wearing? <laughs> and a loss for words I see at the sight of a mighty Nordic warrior like myself who fights on behalf of the Empire. Prepare to finally meet your maker, corporate commander. Jesus Christ, yo, you've been playing way too much Skyrim, haven't you? You will not survive today! Hey, I shall kill you and watch I'm counting my money! Leave! Security! Security! You know how hard it is to be so excited for a game, to have it hyped up to no end, and for it to actually live up to all of the hype and then some even surpass it? Well, that is what just happened here with Skyrim. I'm slobbering over myself how awesome this game is. I put more than 60 hours of gameplay into this thing. I have been playing it non-stop since its release and I'm here to tell you that we are in the midst of a championship franchise dynasty that keeps on giving. All you need to do when you buy this game is get two other things. This and this. Just take that bad boy and strap it right onto your ass because you are gonna wanna move for weeks. As you can tell, I love this game. You buy now, yes? You buy now, yes? And if you've been following my Twitter feed, then you should have already bought the game. This review is just for the record, for the archives. So let's get to it. Now you start the game as a prisoner. You're the leader of the rebellion. But if they've captured you, oh gods, where are they taking us? Again. Anyone else think that Bethesda has some kind of prisoner fetish? Set 200 years after the events of Oblivion, the northern land known as Skyrim is in turmoil. A civil war rages throughout the holes between the Empire Loyalists and the Stormcloak Nord Rebels who wish to see Skyrim become independent from the Empire. Throw in an uneasy truce alliance with the Thalmor Elves that nearly destroyed the Empire and then put in a prophecy that is being fulfilled that states the dragons will return, led by an evil one who will bring about the end of the world. This is the storyline you're playing in. You're not stopping us this time. 
If you love rich worlds with detailed history, there is no better franchise than The Elder Scrolls, with hundreds of books to further immerse yourself in the mythos. With all of this, this is literally a game that will consume you. And this year, they added significant improvements to what I already considered one of my favorite RPG franchises of all time. The leveling system from Oblivion has been fixed. No longer are you going to see bandits wearing ebony armor. You're no longer going to get weaker by leveling up if you don't do it correctly. You are able to create the type of character that you want more easily than ever before. As you level up, you simply put points into either Magicka, Health, or Stamina. And as always, the more you do certain activities or professions, the better you get at them. Trainers can help speed that process for a bit of coin. You could further specialize your character by adding perk points to each one of the specific skill trees. Some even reward your hard work and allow you to create exclusive items, such as dragon armor, which is badass and can only be obtained by reaching a smithing level of 100 and finding a bunch of dragon bones and scales to create it. And it is amazing how fleshed out and how many things there are for you to do. Things like lock picking, pickpocketing, creating new sinister potions and poisons with alchemy, smithing your own weapons and armor at forges, and then enchanting those weapons and armor with magical items and recharging them with soul gems so that they stay with their magical properties. The game is so deep with so many different things and options for you to do, it's insane. And now that dragons have finally been added to the Elder Scrolls, my wish has been answered. Dragon sightings can be dynamic. One moment you're talking with an NPC and the next moment you hear... Thus begins an epic battle where you choose how to take down the dragon. I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. We are routed. Fall back. Come on. Will you bring it down with your skill at archery? Or will you bide your time and force it to land? Landing powerful blows to the beast's head while taking the full force of its attacks? And when you finally beaten him, you were rewarded as the dragon slowly burns away and you consume a dragon soul, which allows you to unlock more dragonborn words of power. Powerful spells that act as a certain fourth option in battle alongside your inherent powers, your magical abilities, and your physical combat attacks. Guys, there are so many activities and things to partake in. Villages, towns, cities, ruins, and handcrafted dungeons, each with its own story to tell. An interesting one at that. Read a book that you found in a nearby camp speaking about the ancient Red Eagle hero and his exploits of old. Then visit his tomb that is marked on your map and actually fight this guy and claim his badass blade as your own. Moments like these that you create yourself is what sets this game apart from all of the others. They feel organic. You aren't forced into it like other games with scripted events that hold your hand through tight corridors. Maik does not understand what is so impressive about shouting. Maik can shout whenever he wants. Maik is tired now. Go bother somebody else. But the biggest reason why this game succeeds is simple. One of the most significant improvements to the game, enough to even convince people who hated Oblivion for its shortcomings, is the improvements to combat. It's no longer stiff 
and, and static. They add elements to make it feel more dynamic, including gruesome and fun kill animations. Dragon Age? What's Dragon Age? I am not a joke. No, you're a lazy brat with a chip on your shoulder. And now you could put weapons or magic into either hand. Dual wield two swords. One magical. Or ditch one of the swords and put a magical healing ability in one of your hands. Or just do what I did. Apply double shock lightning. Apply your favorites and quickly switch between them easily, giving you your most powerful spells and weapons at the touch of just two buttons. I can literally go on for hours, forever about what this game does right, but it boils down to everything in the game is interesting. From the main quest, to the side quest, to the guild quest, to even the dynamic quests. You can all approach them the way you want as intended by the developers, and even completely unintended. Those that you end up creating these crazy storylines yourself that you then share with your friends. You are exactly what I was looking for. A fucking talking dog. A talking dog ran up to me while I was chasing butterflies. Yes. And all of that is because this game allows it. There's no invisible walls, and some of these limitations that we've all grown to embrace in RPGs, it's liberating as hell. This is the quintessential RPG in my opinion. A masterpiece, one that I will be measuring all other RPGs to. It's hard for me to find faults in this game that take away from the experience enough to mention it. But there are a few, if only minor, gripes. Like how you don't really see your character in the inventory screens. So you can preview armor sets and weapons and how they would look. Or how, on occasion, the AI for the NPC followers is really, really bad. They can be frustratingly dumb setting off traps even though they saw you avoid them and how to avoid them. Or simply won't get the fuck out of the way in small hallways. God damn it, get out of the way! Thankfully, there are ways for dealing with such idiocy. See what happens when you get in my way? Serves you right! Character models, a big complaint from previous games, have seen improvements. Especially on the Khajiit and Ergonians, which have seen the most improvement and look more animal and reptile-like than ever before. NPCs continue to work and do their daily activities as you have conversations with them, which can sometimes lead to some really awkward situations. Uncivilized pelt-wearing axe draggers. It's a wonder they don't still live in a cave well, like those well, ancestors well, 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 well. they keep boasting about. But they help make the game feel more organic when they're working right. However, by now, in a game so immersive like this, I'm a bit disappointed in the character creator that the technology here has not caught up with the rest of the game. Yes, it's somewhat extensive, but there are still... It's difficult to create the character that you'd like. We should be able to upload pictures of our own faces by now to create an in-game character model like some of these other games from EA. Despite this, you are still able to create acceptable avatars. But this is one of the few things that's not greatly improved from the previous games, and should have been. Hopefully, it will be focused on the next game. The soundtrack. The soundtrack in this franchise has always been amazing, and it continues to be here. Especially those Nordic chants and touches in the Oblivion's theme song. Same with the excellent voice acting, although they do use and repeat some of the voices a bit too much. And 
Bethesda has had an unfortunate but earned reputation of releasing buggy games. But so far, at least in my experience, this launch has been pretty stable. I haven't run into any game breaking bugs and only experienced one freeze after about 40 hours. And at one point, for some reason, a dragon failed to burn away and give me the dragon soul. Uh, hello? And while they did their best to make the terrain over this massive world player proof, I did manage to get stuck once or twice. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh boy. But that's kind of how I play, jumping around like a madman trying to get to areas that I shouldn't be able to get to. Creating shortcuts, but that's what I love about this game so much that it even allows you to do that. And it actually works sometimes. Alright! Woo! Sweet! Shortcut to the labyrinth! If not, you can always load a previous save, which it does a great job of retaining a history of four different auto saves for you to choose from. In a massive game like this, open world with so many different systems working in the background and unique mechanics like transforming into a werewolf, a few bugs and glitches can be forgiven. And honestly, in what other game can you turn into a werewolf, slaughter hundreds of people, become a vampire, fight dragons, absorb their souls, and shout words of power, all before going to your home, storing all the sweet loot that you picked up, doing some interior decorating around your house before sitting down and reading a good book? Huh? Exactly. It's like this game was built for me. I gotta name my butterfly, I don't have a name for him yet. Oh jeez, oh jeez, I'm about to break the jar. Oh, good, oh, woo, woo. <laughs> All right, sweet, looks good. Taking cues from Fallout 3 and improving on everything that they've learned from the previous Elder Scrolls game, Skyrim is a masterpiece. Bethesda has created the penultimate Western RPG, a game that raises the bar for all other RPGs. And that's why the final verdict for The Elder Scrolls Skyrim is a full, highest rating that I can issue, 10 out of 10. And it easily earns the badass seal of approval. I cannot wait to see all the DLC and expansions coming. Now if you'll excuse me, I gotta play through it again as evil, doing all the thieves guild missions, doing all the dark brotherhood missions, and doing a few chores for some Deidre princes that I neglected the first time around. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show! Mike is tired now. Go bother somebody else. Mike is done talking.